I want to talk now about all of this breaking news in the fight against terror with the senior Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Adam Schiff of California. Thanks so much, Congressman, for being with us. You bet. And I want to talk to you about, of course, the death of this AQAP leader, the number two of Al Qaeda. But I want to talk to you first about what we're just learning. A 20 year old man charged with planning to detonate an explosive device in New York in the name of ISIS. Uh, what can you tell us about this? Well, we're still getting information on this uh, latest domestic plot, and, and unfortunately, we have seen a proliferation of these from the plot in Boston to this one in New York to the one in Garland, Texas. Uh, a lot of it is uh, fed by some very sophisticated uh, ISIS propaganda. Uh, I don't know if that was the case uh, with respect to the New York uh, plot, uh, but we're trying to gather all the facts that we can as quickly as we can. Uh, obviously, the imperative in these kind of investigations is to make sure we run the ground whether there are any other people involved and there, whether there's any continuing threat to the public. But it just highlights uh, the continual uh, threat and pressure that we face from this homegrown radicalism uh, and the power of social media to communicate that violent message. I know for U.S. officials, you can't really overstate the symbolic importance of getting al Wahashi in Yemen. This is someone who trained in Afghanistan in the 90s with Osama bin Laden. He was in the Tora Bora after 9-11 before fleeing the country. Um, but he wasn't the target for this strike. So do you think that U.S. intel really gets credit for this? Well, I think we do. Uh, I think the community does. Uh, because, look, we have a, a variety of sources of intelligence, even in these very harsh, impermissible spaces like Yemen. Uh, it's a combination of some human intelligence, although I think we've had a real atrophying of human intelligence uh, after we had to remove a lot of our people uh, with the civil war going on there. But we have strong uh, signals intelligence. We have strong overhead intelligence. We put that together to identify people that we believe are in the leadership of AQAP. And we may not know uh, all the time precisely which leaders have gathered, uh, but uh, you know, uh, statistically, if you're going after the top leadership, uh, ultimately you're going to get them as we did here. Uh, and this is you know, quite a big uh, and successful counterterrorism operation because some of these figures are not easily replaceable. It is disruptive the organization. This was somebody viewed as the heir apparent to Zawahiri, uh, someone who led the most dangerous franchise of AQAP, so it's a significant achievement. And this isn't the only AQAP official taken out in recent months. Since uh, the beginning of this year, there have been a number of them to the point where we understand there are actually rumors inside of the terrorist organization that there may be spies that have infiltrated. What do you think about that? Well, and this is part of uh, what makes these counterterrorism operations successful is uh, you not only gain insights from them uh, in how you see the, the organization respond, but it also sows a lot of uh, discord within the terrorist organization as they all begin to look at each other and wonder, okay, who might be a source of information? Uh, but here, if you look at AQAP, they just lost their top leader. Uh, they lost their top propagandist in Alaki. Uh, the one remaining, I think, very dangerous figure, in addition to the now successor, uh, is Al Nasiri, the maker, uh, who is very much uh, on our priority list as well. So a lot of very dangerous people coming out of AQAP that are really key uh, to the remaining vitality of core Al-Qaeda. And if uh, Al Asiri responsible, really the mastermind behind that very close to happening underwear bombing uh, in 2000 uh, or a few years ago here. And you know, I think what we've heard from experts though is that knowledge that is so I get a marker of AQAP. They expect that even with al uh even if he is to be taken out, that that's going to remain. So how close is the U.S. to taking him out, and would it even matter? Well, it really does matter because, uh, you know, like al who was really good at what he did with that propaganda, uh, he's not easily replaceable. There are other people that will step in and have stepped into his shoes, uh, but they're not necessarily as effective. Uh, and similarly, you take out the chief bomb maker, and he may have apprentices, but those apprentices may not be as good as the master bomb maker himself. Uh, so it does have a disruptive impact, but, you know, Brian, I think you point out a very important uh, issue, and that is this has to be only one piece of a counterterrorism strategy. You can't rely simply on operations that take out leadership. Uh, it has to be accompanied by an attack on the ideology, on the recruitment, on the financing, really all across the spectrum. All right, we have much more to go in this conversation, uh, but I got to get in a quick break. Congressman, we'll be right back for more with the top Democrat on the House Intel Committee.
We are back now with the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Adam Schiff, and we're talking about a huge new setback for Al Qaeda. This is the death of a senior leader in a U.S. strike, the number two in Al Qaeda, the leader of AQAP, perhaps the most active branch of Al Qaeda. So, Congressman, we've seen this 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 string of successful strikes in recent weeks in Yemen against Al Wahashi, and then as well, we've seen this strike uh, in Libya recently. These are very important, and I, it makes people wonder if the intel community, are they doing something different? Is there some sort of, like, code they've cracked in a way uh, on some of this? Well, I think the intelligence community is continuing to improve its capabilities uh, in some of these very difficult spaces like Yemen, uh, like Libya. Uh, and while I can't comment on the precise nature of the counterterrorism operations uh, that may have been undertaken in Yemen, I can say that, uh, you know, I think over time, intelligence ends up building on itself. So you get information from particular sources that lead you to new sources. Uh, you learn information from signals intelligence about particular communications that helps you build on other communications. Uh, and I think the, the effect is we're, we're getting better at this. Uh, we obviously had good information about where Abu Sayyaf was in Syria that enabled that uh, operation to try to capture him. Uh, we also had pretty good information in terms of Libya uh, with respect to somebody who had American blood on his hands, uh, as well as the uh, blood of many dozens of hostages, uh, and with respect to uh, some of the top leadership in AQAP, we've been successfully able to go after them as well. So we're good at it, we're getting better at it. Uh, but again, this has to be just one piece of a broader counterterrorism strategy. Yeah, and there is the, the big guy, right? The leader of Al Qaeda, Ayman al Zawahiri. The U.S. has not gotten him yet. Um, what do you think the prospect of, of that is, especially now that I imagine a lot of uh, terror uh, leaders are worrisome or, or sort of wary of uh, being caught? They may be being careful. Well, his time will come. Uh, we haven't forgotten about Zawahiri. He was the number two to bin Laden uh, and was a very direct actor in the deaths of scores of Americans. So uh, we will take as long as is necessary and we will turn over every rock and go to uh, every expense and every effort to track him down. Uh, so I'm confident his time is coming. Uh, and I'm not able to really say more than that. Okay, before I let you go, I do want to talk about Russia because now, now Vladimir Putin is saying that he's switching out some uh, nuclear weapons for 40 uh, new nuclear warheads that are advanced uh, and could stop anti, uh, uh, anti-missile defense, which is obviously a, a big warning to the U.S. It's talking about putting some um, weapons near the border there uh, with Russia. Uh, is this a fight between the U.S. and Russia, or is this a fight between the U.S. and Putin? Well, I think this is really a, a fight between the international community and, and Russia uh, and Putin. Uh, this is a, a authoritarian ruler who has invaded his neighbor, uh, who has annexed uh, territory of his neighbor, and now who is, has resorted to throwing uh, nuclear threats on the table but, in a way so that I'm is I'm sorry to interrupt you, Congressman. I, I, just, I yeah. kind of want to clarify my question. I guess my question is, do you see this being very personality-driven by Putin? Do you think that Russians and mass are, are backing him on this? Or do you think this is just, this is just Putin? Well, I, I honestly think it's a combination of both. It's certainly driven by Putin, by his personality, by his paranoia, many would say. Uh, but it enjoys a very high degree of popularity among the Russian people. Uh, the arguments that Putin makes uh, that Russia has been belittled, it's been stabbed in the back, uh, that Russia has to go protect other ethnic Russians in other parts of the world, that Russia is encircled by its enemies, all of these arguments appeal to Russian sentiments uh, and they have made his policies very popular. Uh, I think that, you know, that popularity uh, is thin in the sense that it will only take him so far. Uh, and if the economy continues to degrade, I think his popularity will degrade with it. But right now, Putin and Russia are pretty much inseparable. All right. Uh, Congressman Adam Schiff, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you.